Howdy there folks, welcome back to the channel. We're once again at that time of the month where Project Zomboid developers grace us with some updates on the upcoming major build for the game, which if you haven't heard already has been confirmed for release into public beta for the first half of this year. As always, I'll be covering everything you need to know from the blog post, condensing things down where necessary and throwing in a bit of speculation here and there. There's a link to the full post in the description if you want to give it a read. And lastly, if you find yourself watching these videos often, I'd just like to give you a nudge to subscribe to the channel. About 82% of my regular viewers aren't actually subscribed, but this has been getting much better as of late, and I'd love to welcome some more of you folks to our community. So yeah, do consider it. All right, let's get into the blog. Now there's some stuff in this one from various different places within the team, but they start this one off with a look at a new UI system for modders looking to construct their own readables and lore items in Project Zomboid. Essentially, the team have drawn up a new secondary UI API system through Java that allows for a highly customized interface. Originally, the team were building this because the readable items they were adding to the game in Build 42 didn't really play nice with the old survival guide UI and just didn't look very high quality when inserted into the game itself, so they decided to build a new one that would let them shine, and as a byproduct, this system will be available to modders too. They even include a link to a video in the dev blog itself, just a few paragraphs down, that shows modders exactly how this will work if you're looking to get a detailed understanding. The devs then go into a bit more detail as to how they are going to be using this new tool, which is essentially for two types of lootable reading material. The first is newspapers and community news pamphlets that aim to bring an element of world building to the mix by fleshing out the timeline of the Nox events. The second, local business flyers, house listings, restaurant menus, and other media relating to business. These items are all intended to have a practical use, and reading these items will automatically reveal a location on your map to encourage players to loot areas that are more likely to possess handy materials. We see a short video in this dev blog showing off a newspaper from the National Dispatch, focusing on one resident's story surrounding the regional blockade, but we also get a look at some advertisements too. And what's particularly interesting about a couple of these items is the imagery featuring actual Project Zomboid character models. Previously, the team were using isometric gameplay screenshots, and they note that these just didn't really fit the bill, so they've now brought on two new individuals to assist with creating some absolutely kick-ass poses for these adverts. If you're wired into the Project Zomboid community, you might have already seen projects from people called Unconid and Verlius on YouTube, and if you haven't, they are definitely worth a look. These two fine chaps are now working with the team, and whilst we've only seen a couple of images so far, I'm confident this is going to add a lot to this particular area of the game, so congrats to those folks. The team also do mention here that they'll be hooking these up to in-game events. Like for example, with Nolan's used cars, if you were to venture to one of his shops revealed on the map by his flyer, you might find a familiar zombie walking around in a white cowboy hat and a white suit. Okay, so moving on to the next segment of this dev blog, we're talking about touching grass. It's okay, don't panic, it's not actually real grass, it's in-game grass, so you're safe and nothing can hurt you here. Okay, now that we've gotten that cleared up, let's see what the devs have been up to. So essentially they state here that the grass in Project Zomboid has been outdated for a little while and they aren't particularly happy with how it looks, especially after Build 41's 3D models came along. Now that Build 42 is set to have a depth buffer system, they can create more realistic looking grass that actually layers over parts of the character or the world's surroundings. We get a couple of before and after screenshots here, and I mean, the difference is just night and day when you take a look at it side by side like this. But if that wasn't enough for you to see the difference, there's also a 50 second video clip attached that shows off the quality of this new environment in real time. As a bit of a side note here, the devs do also mention that with the new depth buffer system in build 42, they can reduce clipping with the scenery, but also add seated characters on furniture in all four directions so that players won't need to use mods. Now, I'm not really sure if this is the devs confirming we'll be able to sit down on furniture in build 42, but it is them saying they'll have the systems to do so. Next up, we're taking a visit to the sound department. Now, if you watched my video on the last dev blog, you'll remember that there was a pretty cool teaser of a new underground bunker, and the team did mention 
mentioned that they'll be working on expanding the soundscape in these areas. Well, in this dev blog, we get not one, but two videos showing exactly what this could look like, or rather sound like. One is from the same underground bunker and another from a brand new industrial lower level in Ekron. I'm going to let some snippets from these videos play for you guys now, but just keep an ear for those distant ambient sounds like mice, cans being knocked over, metal crashing and so on. Honestly, it's pretty fantastic and adds a lot to the experience as you'll soon see. Enjoy. Okay, so as I said, some pretty awesome advancements here, and as someone that really enjoys a deep level of atmosphere and immersion in the games I play, this was a really welcome addition, and I can't wait to start exploring these underground areas when they come to life in Build 42. Okay, so we've already had a couple of clips in this dev blog, but the developers haven't stopped there, and in the next section we get a look at some of the new mechanics surrounding fences and zombie hordes. Now this is really exciting for me because base defense, in my opinion, has always been a part of Project Zomboid that has been left a little bit neglected, and I've never really understood why zombies don't do what we're about to see in this clip. So anyway, in short, we get a look at a bunch of zombies piling up against a chain link fence before ultimately bringing it down crashing through it and devouring the survivor on the other side. The devs note here that this will be a sandbox option for people that don't enjoy this feature and that it will also only come into play with large hordes over a lengthy period of time. The video itself is a work in progress and the effect itself is sped up. The team are also going to be working on animations and visuals for the crowding and banging on the fence part of the interaction too. Still, a very interesting feature that I'm hopeful is hinting a little bit more focus towards a reason for base defense. Okay, so the next section is a bit wordy, but essentially we get to hear some more details about how Fenris's work with the firearms in Project Zomboid is going, and a list of specific improvements is shown besides some footage. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to list these off for you and attempt to cut them down a little bit whilst that footage plays. First up, wind, fog and rain, as well as lighting, have an effect on hit and critical hit chances now. These can be offset by skill levels or traits. Ranged shots into fog or darkness will be much more difficult. Maximum firing range has been increased and is no longer affected by skill level. The distance to the target has a great effect on penalties like panic, drunkenness or player movement. Most penalties like this are reduced at close range. Sound radius has been increased overall but with sandbox options to modify this. Sound range is reduced when firing indoors. Sighting systems have an ideal range that they were designed for with a maximum and minimum effective range. Outside this range they are less effective. If a target is close enough that just pointing the weapon without aiming would give a higher hit chance, then that sight is ignored. Panic previously didn't affect hit chances, but now it does and that has been corrected. Hit chances and critical chances are now calculated in the same way, so if something affects hit chance, it'll affect crit chance too. Hit chances are increased, allowing lower levels to make more successful shots. However, avoiding negative impacts like panic is now vital. All your miss 
looks just as much if not more as before. Ammo weighting has been corrected and rebalanced. Mounted flashlights are now functional and highly advised for low light conditions that could affect hit chances. Phew, okay, long list there, but hopefully that all came across clearly. As for the video itself, basically what we're seeing here is Fenris's experimentations and a graph that shows hits and critical chances in real time across various tile distances. The circles around the character show optimal ranges for the given sights on the weapon, maximum ranges and hit chances at various ranges. Okay, so that's weapons. Next we're on to another look at the developing armor system we can expect in build 42. The team start by noting that their intention here is similar to their vision with crafted weaponry. They want to make something that isn't referencing too much from current zombie media, but instead creates something that seemed natural for the time and circumstances. They specifically say they don't want anything that looks too anachronistic or medieval looking. Instead, you'll see from the images we're given in this section, they focus on using items you'll actually be able to acquire in-game and build on those items, especially when it comes to various sports gear like padding and guards. Anything that's made with metal or other gathered materials takes on a much more post-apocalyptic look and honestly gives me a bit of a Mad Max vibe. I'm not sure if that's the intention here, but that's how I see it at least. Interestingly, the developers also make a note here that there won't be any historical weapons or armor up for grabs in mansions or museums. They see this as the high tier armor available in the game and they want players to engage with the crafting system in order to obtain it and to put in some real effort rather than just beeline for the nearest spawn location, and I guess that makes sense if this is going to be the top of the line armor in the game from here on out. Before the devs wrap up this section, we get a pretty scary looking encounter in the form of another video clip, which shows zombies actually wearing this rather pointy looking piece of armor and the survivor sustaining actual injuries by pushing them and ultimately cutting themselves in the process. Just in case, you know, the zombies weren't scary enough already. Winslow, is that you? Before the developers wrap up this blog post we get a short clip taking us through one of the new skyscrapers coming to the game in build 42 with the above and below ground elevation expansion. I feel like I've said this a lot by now but if you're not familiar we're getting 32 levels above ground and 32 levels below ground now. The developers have been testing skyscrapers for playability and performance and they note that it turns out offering 32 levels of floors spawning at the same rate creates quite a lot of zombies. Q shock and surprise here. So they've said they've got some balancing to do in that respect, but all the same, it looks pretty cool. Not much to show from the crafting team in this update, but the devs do note here that essentially there's a lot of core code work going on here right now, and as such, things aren't really filmable at this time, but they hope to bring us more on this in the not too distant future. So that's it from the developers in this one, and as such that's it from me, but a lot of exciting stuff is coming for Project Zomboid, and by the developers timeline we're not far now from getting to try this out for ourselves. Once again there's a link in the description, and if you're looking for a server to play Project Zomboid on with a very welcoming community, a bunch of mods, maps and themes we commission ourselves, and give our players the chance to try, you can join my Patreon for £3 a month, support the channel, and we're hosting a fresh wipe this month with over one. 120 modded maps in play. Special thank you to all my existing patrons for their support to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one.